If you're interested in making a detailed platformer just like this one, within Game Maker, using drag and drop, then keep watching. G'day gamers, and welcome back to our drag and drop platformer series. Last tutorial, we added a screen shake, which gave those collisions with the enemies a little bit more impact. In this tutorial, we're going to add an effect that'll just make the game feel a little bit more alive. We're going to add some leaves that fall from the top of the screen. It'll give the game a little bit more atmosphere. Now, if you look in the description, you'll find a link to the sprites that are used throughout the series. You need to grab that zip file, just unzip it into a folder. The one we're using is s underscore leaf dot gif. So I'm gonna drag that in. And you'll see there are four frames and it's got a very slow speed of four frames a second. Now what we want to do here is make sure we set the origin to be the middle center. I'm going to close that down and then we're going to make the object for that sprite. So create object, I'm going to call this O underscore leaf and I'm going to assign the sprite. Now in order to give the leaves some variety, I want to change the size of them when they're created and also we can change which direction they're facing just to mix it up a little bit so they don't all look the same. So let's add a create event. And the first thing I want to do is I want to declare a temporary variable. And this is what we're going to use to set the size. So I'm just going to call it size. And I'm going to set it to random underscore range between 0.5 and 1. Now with this temporary variable, we can then go down and assign it to an instance variable. And we're going to assign it to the horizontal scale. And then we can click plus and we can assign a same thing to the vertical scale. So this is going to be size as the value and size here as well. And the reason we're doing it this way is to ensure that the ratio is right for the object. We're using the same size value for the horizontal and the vertical. Now in order to flip it left or right to give it some variety, I'm going to use the choose function. And I'm going to drag it in here. Now we can use choose to randomly pick a value between some set values. So I'm going to set the first value to be minus one, click the plus, and the next one to be one. So we're going to use this to say whether the leaf is facing to the right or the left. I'm just going to set it to a temporary variable. I'm just going to call it facing. So when the create event happens, facing will be set to either one or minus one, size will be set to a value, and we're setting it here. We also want to time size by facing. And that way, this minus one or one will be applied to the horizontal scale. The horizontal scale, which is known by the image underscore X scale keyword, is used to scale the object sprite in the horizontal direction. So by default, the horizontal scale is one, so the sprite looks normal. If you change the horizontal scale to minus one, you can essentially flip the sprite over on its axis, which if you recall, is what we are doing to the player with its facing variable. So if we increase the horizontal scale, we stretch the object. If we decrease it, we shrink the object until it flips over when it becomes less than zero. It's also important to note that the flipping occurs on the sprite's origin. And the last thing I wanna do is just add a change to the speed. So I'm gonna set the vertical speed to be a random range value between say 0 0.4 and 1.2. So that'll be used just to give some variety in the speed of the, how the leaves are falling. Great, so we've set up the initial part of the leaf. Now I'm going to add a step event and we're going to actually monitor where the leaf is because if the leaf falls beyond the screen limits, we need to delete it. So remember the leaf is going to be falling down. At one point, it's going to exit the room size. So it's going to exit the bottom of the room. And once that happens, we don't want the leaf to exist anymore. If you don't monitor and destroy instances when they leave your room, you could end up having a lot of problems because Game Maker doesn't care if they're in the room or not, it is still drawing them and is still processing the code. So you've got to make sure if you don't want the instance anymore, you need to delete it. So let's run a check here and we'll say if our Y position is greater than the room height, well then what we want to do is just destroy the instance. Great, so now we need to spawn the leaves in the room. So I'm going to do that in the game object. So let's create them under variable definitions. I'm gonna create some variables that will enable us to create the leaves. 
So I'm going to call the first one spawn leaf initial. And this will be set to 30. And this will be the time between each leaf spawning. So the next variable I'm going to have is spawn leaf timer. And this will just be a timer that counts down. When it gets to zero, we'll create a leaf and we'll set the timer back to the initial time. So our game runs at 60 frames a second. We're creating a leaf every 30, which means we're creating one every half a second. So now we need to go to the step event and we need to create the leaves based on that time. So I'm just going to run a script here. So I'm going to say execute script. And the script's going to be called SCR, standing for script, spawn underscore leaf. Now I'll take a copy of that because we need to go and create this script. So I right click on scripts, say create script, and then we'll paste in the name. Now here's where we actually spawn the leaves. So let's drag this bigger so we can see what's happening. Now we need to look at our timer. So we call the timer spawn leaf timer and we say if the spawn leaf timer is less than or equal to zero then we can create the leaf. So we need to assign a value and we're going to set the spawn leaf timer and we're going to set the timer back to spawn leaf initial. So therefore it'll be another 30 frames before we create another one. So now we can create the instance. So I drag this down. We want to create an O leaf object. And where do we want to create it? Well, in relation to the X, it can be anywhere along the top of the room. So let's set this to a random range value between zero and the room width. And in relation to our Y, well, zero is the top of the room. So we want to spawn it above that. So I'm going to set it to minus, let's say just 16. So our instance of leaf is going to spawn outside the room. And because we have set a vertical speed, uh, it's going to start to fall down. So lastly, we need to set it to a layer. Let's create a layer called leaves. And we'll go do that in a moment. Now, the other thing to look for is if the spawn leaf timer is not less than zero, then we need to take one off this per step. So let's go to the else and say, if this is not the case, let's set spawn leaf timer to whatever it was before, minus one. So relative minus one. Now let's go to our room. And let's create the leaves just below the enemy. So just here, click on new instance layer. I'm going to click here and press F2. And then I'm going to call this leaves. So let's press run and see what that looks like. So there we go. We've got leaf falling and they are of different sizes. And also they are facing different ways. So they should appear below the player. And you can drag that leaves layer if you want up above, if you'd like, above the player, and then they will fall in front. It's up to you how you want to do that. So the next thing to notice is the leaves, I want them to fall on the ground and then vanish after a certain time. At the moment, they just fall all the way down the screen. And you may want that. That may be an effect you're looking for. But I'll show you how to make them fall onto the platforms and then disappear. So let's go back to our leaves or our leaf object and let's go back to our variable definitions and I'm going to add a time to die here. So this is how long left until the leaf will disappear. And I'm going to set it to room underscore speed times five, which is essentially 60 times five, which is the same as writing 300. So you can do that, you can just write the value. I'm writing it like this because if for some reason you wanted to change your room speed, uh, all your game timing would be different. So if you do it like this, the timing won't matter. So let's look at our step event. Now in order for the leaves to interact with the ground, we need to do a collision check. So we're going to have a look at our if object at place. I'm going to drag this just above this Y test. 
and we want to look if we're having a collision with the solid. And we want to look at our current position, so I'm going to check relative on both of these because we're not adding any values. And if we do find that we have a collision, so if we've fallen onto a solid, we want to stop the object. So let's just go and have a look at our set instance variable. Let's just make this a bit bigger. So if we did have a collision, let's set our vertical speed to zero. So that'll stop moving. We also need to stop our animation. So I'm going to set our animation speed to be zero. And that's so we don't keep cycling through the different frames of the leaf while we're actually on the solid. Now let's decrease our time to die by one. So our time to die, we want to set it relative and minus one, and that'll take one off at each step. Now if our time to die is less than zero, well then we want to destroy the leaf. So let's drag this down and let's say if our time to die is less than or equal to zero, then we want to destroy the instance. So let's try that out. So now we should see our leaves falling and they should stop on the platforms. And they do, and they also stop animating. Now after five seconds, you can see they disappear. And we can look at these ones here and see they disappear. Now they kind of pop away. You could fade these away. And I showed you how to do a fade in the juice section when we looked at fading the explosion. So you could add a nice little fade during the time that it's uh, dying. And that might be something you want to look at. I want to make this a little bit more efficient because if we go back and look at the code, the step event here is running every step. So this collision is checking every step. So even when the object is on the ground, we're still checking if we're going to collide. And object collision checks are actually pretty intensive. And if you're doing a lot of them, especially if you've got a lot of leaves or a lot of particles like that, that can all add up. So let's make a little change here to make it a little bit more uh, efficient. And before we run this check, I'm gonna run another check. And I'm just gonna look up here and say, what has changed? If we are on the ground, if we've already checked for this and we're on the ground, our vertical speed is actually zero. So we don't want to run this if our vertical speed is already zero because we've already done that. We've already done the test. So let's just check that and say if our vertical speed is zero and uh, if you want to get your vertical speed, you can just type V speed. That is the same thing as the vertical speed. Like the variable that GameMaker knows it as is V speed. So if that is not equal to zero, well then we want to check if we're actually colliding. But if it is equal to zero, then we want to decrease the time to die value. So instead of putting all of this in here, let's select all that with shift, right click and say cut. And we'll place an else here. Oh, sorry, else just there. And let's paste it here under the else. Oh, that should, those three should go under the else. So if I could zoom out a bit and show you that. Just make this bigger so you can see it. So we've got our V-speed check. We're checking for a collision. If there is a collision, we set our vertical speed to zero and our animation to zero, and then we move on down to here. But the next step that this comes in, V-speed will now be equal to zero because we set it here and our time to die will start to decrease. So this is a little more efficient in that we're not running this collision check for leaves that are already on the ground. We don't need to check them anymore. They've already been checked. So let's just run that again and make sure that all works. Yep, so there we've got our leaves that are already touching the ground. And once again, they will disappear after that certain time, but they're not running the check anymore. Now you could add to this. If I restart the game with pressing R, you'll see there are no leaves, which is kind of odd. So you could actually spawn a few random ones in the room before the game starts or at the start of the game, uh, just using the random rage. And you could do that with something like a repeat. 
So I'm not really going to show you how to do that, but I want to say that's something you could work on, something you could add yourself so that it looks like the room's already alive and not empty when the game starts. So that's all for this tutorial. Before I go, I wanted to mention my Patreon supporters. I've got a few Patreon supporters only, but I appreciate those guys and I'm just showing the names on the screen now. They're guys who've come in and said, look, we like the work you're doing and we appreciate that you put some time into it. So we are going to reward you for that. So if you'd like to do the same, you can go over to Patreon and just give a few dollars just to help me to do more tutorials like this. If that's not something you're interested in, but you are interested in doing more GML, you can find my Game Maker course on Udemy. It's currently the highest rated Game Maker 2 course on Udemy, and there's a special coupon code down in the description which you can use to get up to 90% off. Now that's all for this tutorial. I want to thank you for joining me, and I'll talk to you in the next one.